Did you truly think you could defeat me? Your powers were a gift for me. It was I who possessed the serpent that bit your hand. It was I who corrupted the great devourer and set him against you. All that has happened was by my design. The devourer was merely a pawn, set in motion by me to provide a worthy vessel for my return. Now at last I have such a vessel. I am complete. The Overlord to Garmadon and Lloyd. Hello, I'm Sensei the Dark Master, and for the 50th installment of The Lore of Ninjago, we shall be covering the Overlord, the source of all darkness and evil in Ninjago, and the antithesis of the first Spinjitsu Master, and the only being who is beyond death itself. We shall be covering his history, powers, influence on Ninjago, and much more. The Overlord's origin date back to the beginning of the realm of Ninjago itself. Emerging from the shadows of the New World, he challenged the first Spinjitsu Master for control of Ninjago. This battle went on for some time, but eventually ground into a stalemate. In order to turn the tides in his favor, the Overlord created the Stone Army out of invincible materials found in what would become the Dark Island to aid him. He also created the Temple of Fortitude, which could generate a force field that resisted the golden power of the first Spinjitsu Master. Seeming to get the upper hand, the Overlord was about to overcome the first Spinzitsu Master, when the first Spinzitsu Master used all of his power to split Ninjago into two islands. One half remained Ninjago, and the other became known as the Dark Island, and served as a prison for the Overlord, as it slowly sunk beneath the endless sea. For thousands of years, the Overlord plotted his revenge. One of his many machinations was to corrupt a small serpent that eventually became known as the Great Devourer and bit Garmadon on the hand, which slowly corrupted Garmadon, turning him evil, which created strife and would eventually lead to his return. During the legacy of the Green Ninja, Garmadon would wash ashore on the Dark Island after being betrayed by Scales and pushed out of a helicopter into the Endless Sea. Here, he was greeted by a mysterious orb, which was the greatly weakened Overlord. Though skeptical at first, Garmadon follows the Overlord's instruction and activated a mechanism located on in a rock at the center of the island, which caused the island to rise up again from the sea. Upon restoring the island, the Overlord would tell Garmadon to climb a series of rugged cliffs, and he eventually arrived in front of the Celestial Clock. The Celestial Clock is a massive machination that counts down to the time of the final battle. The Overlord tells Garmadon to don the Helmet of Shadows, removing it from the pedestal and activating the machine, and orders the construction of the Stone Army's forces, including the mighty Garmatron. The Helmet of Shadows allows Garmadon to control the Stone Army. Despite the ninja's best efforts and thanks to the interference of General Kozu, the Celestial Clock completes its countdown and the prophecy of the final battle became inevitable. The Overlord encouraged Garmadon to activate the Garmatron, which shot at Ninjago dark matter missiles that upset the balance and allowed the Overlord to cross back into the mortal world. Betraying Garmadon, he possessed the body and caused him to metamorphose into a CGI abomination that attacked Lloyd. Lloyd fought the Overlord, possessed Garmadon, who fought from the inside, but sadly lost with the Overlord escaping the Dark Island and leaving the ninja trapped on the Dark Island. He began assaulting Ninjago City. With the Garmatron turning into a massive Sauron-esque tower, and the Overlord painfully transforming Garmadon into a massive dragon-like form. He would successfully corrupt all the ninja with dark matter, but was completely obliterated by Lloyd upon unlocking his golden potential. 
However, despite the heroes feeling successful, the Overlord was not fully destroyed, though he was reduced to almost nothing. When Sirius Borg arrogantly built his Borg Tower on the former resting place of the Garmatron, the Overlord, through unknown means, was able to infect the network as a digital virus. After some time of peace, the digital Overlord infected Sirius Borg through his artificial limbs, transforming him into the entity known as the Overborg, and spread his corruption to all the robots in New Ninjago City and began tagging the ninja, trying to get the Technoblades, which were really the only thing that could hurt him. Indeed, the Overlord, tired of his digital prison, seeked out Lloyd's golden power to regain his physical body. Though he is temporarily stopped when the power is cut off, Pythor saves him with the help of Electro Cobrae, a species of aquatic viper, and eventually captured Lloyd and began draining his power. Meanwhile, the other ninja enter into the Digiverse and begin attacking the digital overlord Matrix style with the Technoblades, which successfully rebooted the system and pretty much destroyed him there. However, the Overlord had managed to suck enough energy to s emerge into the physical world as a very weak purple liquidy form. The Overlord then had Pythor and his ninjroids build a large rocket codenamed Arcturus to acquire the golden weapons, which had been blasted into space during the events of Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Despite the ninja chasing after them and trying their best, the ninjroids obtained the golden weapons and left the ninja stranded on the alien co comet. The Overlord melted down the golden weapons to create a set of armor that made him the Golden Master and created a massive tripodal mech that he used his now indestructible power and near invincible to completely redesign Ninjago City using a net of pure golden energy. He managed to trap all the ninja except Zane, who got close enough to the Overlord to hang on to his golden armor. Zane began absorbing the energy from the golden armor, and he released it in a huge sacrificial icy explosion that destroyed the physical bodies of both. However, much like Zane, the Overlord actually survived this, in two ways in fact. First, in the web series Ninjago Decoded, it is revealed that a remnant of the digital overlord virus survived in Zane, being trapped in a memory loop, and slowly began corrupting the poor ninjroid to enact his revenge on the ninja for destroying him, using Zane's traumatic memories to torture him. However, the other ninja, using Zane's good memories, managed to erase the overlord virus, this time for good. However, this was not the end, for the true Overlord had actually survived his defeat by Zane. Feigning dormancy, he spent several years plotting his revenge, feeding off the various conflicts that occurred while he was gone, waiting for an opportunity to return. He would be mentioned in the Days of the Departed by Dr. Saunders, saying that the museum has a statue for both the Overlord and the Golden Master, apparently unaware that they're the same entity, but whatever. Following the liberation of Ninjago City, Jay references him, and we see him in the mural painted on the Monastery of Spinjitsu during the March of Inoni. An opportunity would eventually present itself when Harumi died and hunted from the collapsing building. He approached her in the guise of the Crystal King and offered her the chance to end the internal battle between creation and destruction. He also offered her a chance of resurrection if she became a servant. Initially hesitant, she agrees and with his help, she escapes the rubble using a crystal. She went to the Oni Temple and, under his instruction, placed the crystal on the pedestal that transformed it into the Crystal Palace. Harumi is scared by his true identity, but is manipulated by him with the promise that there will be peace in the dark, and by destroying the balance, there will be no more conflict.
She goes out and buys a lot of Vengestone to build him a massive army that would be immune to the ninja's power. Around a year after the Great Flood caused by Kalmar's invasion of Ninjago City, the Overlord began recruiting villains for his Crystal Council, which in eventually included Mr. E, rebuilt as Mr. F, Vangelis, the Mechanic, Pythor, and Asphira. They would eventually steal the golden weapons, and using a ritual with Asphira's staff, the Overlord emerged into a physical form. The Overlord then gave the villains of his council new powers, and the golden weapons are turned into the weapons of destruction, and he activates his Vengestone army, which he used to attack the Ninjago city, and turned numerous citizens into mindless crystal zombies. The ninja tried their best, unlocking their dragon forms, to fight off the Overlord, and eventually defeated the Crystal Council. But it is revealed that the Overlord knew this, and intended to corrupt the elements of creation. He was almost victorious, but thanks to a distraction by Garmadon's sacrifice unlocking Lloyd's Oni form, the ninja were able to sacrifice their elemental powers to release the Golden Ultra Dragon, which overpowered the Dark Lord and destroyed him once again, freeing Ninjago from his evil darkness. Now that we've concluded his history, let us discuss his many abilities and powers. First, and most obviously of the Overlord's abilities, is his total immortality. Being the source of all darkness, he represents the dark part of the balance in Ninjago, due to which he as an entity can never really be destroyed, as when he is defeated he can recover apparently from nothing. And during these times, he is on another phase of existence when dormant. And Willy can just return, though he does need someone to help him cross the barrier to the living. The Overlord uses shells in order to act in the physical world, and as such, doesn't really have his own physical form, and really just exists as a concept slash spirit of evil. The Overlord possesses the ability of possession, by which the Overlord can possess objects and people, such as he did with Sirius Borg or Garmadon. In fact, in said form, he gains enhanced physical strength and high durability. The Overlord also has enhanced perception, being able to sense Garmadon via some thermal predator-style vision and sense the ninja when they arrive on the Island of Darkness. The Overlord has the ability to resurrect souls from the Departed Realm, such as what he did with Harumi shortly after she vowed to serve him. Perhaps a little more mundane, the Overlord has the ability to float really easily, such as when he traveled on the Dark Island or on the Crystal Temple. In addition to these, he has two elemental powers, darkness and for a time, golden power. Let us start with darkness as it is the most significant of the player and has numerous sub powers. The Overlord's elemental essence of darkness gives him a basic level of umbra kinesis, or the ability to manipulate, control, generate, and shoot out shadows. He can do this like he did when he utilized beams of darkness in his combat with Lloyd. He can also use it to fly. He is also able to generate dark lightning using umbro electrokinesis. With darkness materialization, the Overlord gives life to inanimate statues, such as he did with the Stone Army and later the Crystal Warriors. With crystal creation, the Overlord can create his own crystals that have multiple attributes. Some can increase the strength of people, such as when Harumi used a crystal to remove debris while escaping the collapsed building. Crystals can help levitate and move objects of great size, and with crystallization, the Overlord can crystallize terrain, people's objects, and even entire cities. 
Once infected, said crystallized things get controlled by the overlord and can spread like a disease. In his golden master form, the overlord could also tap into the sheer overwhelming power known as the elemental essence of golden power. For a time, he gained nigh omnipotence in creation. And I've already made videos on both darkness and golden power, so if you want to go even more into depth, I highly recommend you check out those two videos, and I'll make sure I put them as both cards and in a link in the description. He used these powers in his takeover of Ninjago. In addition to all these powers, the Overlord has many different forms that he takes throughout his time on Ninjago. In his dormant state, he takes on an orb-like form that can be either ethereal or crystalline. It looks like those X-parasites from Metroid. During his fight with the first Benzitsu Master, he took on the look of a morphous, shadowy humanoid. When in possession of Garmadon, he slowly took on a demonic dragon form that became more pronounced as time passed. As the digital overlord, he took on a distinctively blue, glitchy appearance. As the Crystal King, he took on a four-armed Oni-like form with a large dragon-like head, and later took on an even larger centaur dragon-winged-esque form of immense size and power. In terms of his relationships, I mean, he's a being of pure evil, and as such, doesn't really have friends as seeing other people as either potential servants or slaves. The closest thing to a friend he has is Pythor, but even then, that's more him just respecting his deviousness as opposed to anything of true friendship. Also, he is associated with the colors of black, dark purple, and to a lesser extent, magenta and gold. In terms of influence on the series, the Overlord is second only to the first Spinjitsu Master himself in terms of sheer impact. He casts a long shadow over all of Ninjago. I mean, if you really think about it, he's also responsible for the Serpentine, the Great Devourer, the Vermilion, he's responsible for everything that Garmadon ever did. Heck, some could make the argument he's also partially responsible for what Klaus did. Really, the only entity that has, like, no connection to him would be both Nauticon and Moro. And really, even those you could say have partial influence due to the broader context in which those events take place. So, really, he's the source of all evil. Before I conclude this video, I would like to answer a question that I get asked a lot, and that's why I don't cover more characters in the Ninjago lore video series like Dareth, which will be the next character I cover, though it probably won't be the next Ninjago lore video I make because, well, I just want to do something between this. And the reason why I don't really do a lot of these character videos is, well, honestly, they just don't age as well as non-character based lore videos. I mean, honestly, I like making videos that have a level of staying power. And when you make a video about a character like one of the main ninja, it, they become outdated as soon as the next season of Ninjago occurs. And I really wanted to avoid that. Luckily, I don't think that the Overlord will be coming back anytime soon, so this video will have a great deal of staying power, hopefully. Returning to the Overlord, what can we learn from this entity? Well, we learn that evil, both in Ninjago and in our world, will always exist. That it is something that we must stay vigilant for, for it will return in times of strife and rise in power. And it is always waiting for a chance to take its dark hand upon our soul. I am Sensei the Dark Master, and join me next time on The Lore of Ninjago, and have a wonderful day.